Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. I work on movies, I work on animation, I run my own studio. I also have my own Emmy winning TV show. And today we're gonna be talking about how to use Magma Studio Pro. Now, why are we even talking about Magma Studio? What's the point of this program? Well, how about it's free? How about you don't have to download any software, install any software? You can use this off of a simple Google uh, Chromebook that can't even install programs. Just use Google Chrome to use the software and away you go. How about you can paint and draw with up to 30 of your friends, all painting and drawing on the same board at the exact same time. And did I mention it's for free? You can also get the pro plan which comes with a ton of extra features, including voice, being able to talk with each other to actually truly draw and just jam with each other and have conversation. Okay, so here we go. Now, these buttons on the sides over here, I've copied them and pasted them right here with a little cheat sheet, okay? so. First one here is the move tool. That's this one here. Next one is the selection tool, selection tool with ellipse, a lasso tool, transform tool. Now transform, usually in some programs you press control T or command T to transform. But when you're using a browser, uh, when you click on Command T or Control T, you open up a new tab. So with Magma Studio, it's Shift T, okay? And once you transform something, some programs you press Enter to finish the transformation. In Magma Studio, you just go to a new uh, tool, okay? Just go to any other new tool and then you can get out of that. All right, so next one we have here is the eyedropper. I for eyedropper, you have all the hotkeys there. Pencil, now pencil, that is kind of like brush, but extremely jagged edged, you know, extremely hard edged down to the very pixel. Then we have the brush, okay, B for brush. E for eraser, the paint bucket tool. Then we have the shape tools. One is a rectangular shape tool. The other one is an ellipse shape tool. Then we have the hand tool, right? Just like space bar, uh, in Photoshop. And then we have rotate over here. And then we have zoom. Okay. And these buttons up here, these are generally for people that use phones, tablets where they don't have access to a keyboard very easily we have the undo tool we have the redo tool we have zoom in zoom out we have flop right we have horizontal um flipping horizontally now the interesting thing with this is that if i flipped it and you were on the same painting with me you wouldn't have noticed the thing it only flips it for me uh, because Magma Studio is a collaborative app and everything there is designed for collaboration. Then we have the rotate, rotate the other direction, and then reset. Okay, next we have here the colors. So you can switch back and forth between foreground and background color or press the letter X to switch back and forth. Then we have the hues, the saturation, the darkness, lightness. Okay, next we have here, we have the various tools that I used previously. Okay, so if you use the tool and you want to get back to that tool with the exact same settings, then you could just click on that and then you can get back to that tool. Okay, and Next, we have here this X button. You can see you go incrementally very easily, or you could just click and drag for the size of the brush that you would like. Next, we have here 
a little box with a little paint brush inside now this paint brush whenever you click into it it means that this attribute now this size will now be controlled or affected by pen pressure so I press lighter and I get a smaller brush I press harder I get a larger brush okay same thing with this one here this attribute density it's kind of like flow in Photoshop the rate at which the paint will come out of your brush so if I have really high density then you can see everything comes out very quickly if I have very low density you can see it takes a while before I get to that hundred percent opacity okay and we have a little box here as well so you can control the density with pen pressure you can have it affect your density a little bit okay uh, next we have here the minimum size for pen pressure okay if you're pressing really light what do you want the minimum size to be so if you want it to be as little as possible you could bring it all the way down to zero okay next we have here is the opacity now this is the opacity of your paint next we have stabilizer so say I was to do a brush stroke a bit more of a complex kind of brush stroke okay and then I do it again with stabilizer turned on you can see that there's a bit of a delay but also the brush stroke is far smoother um, so the more you turn up the stabilizer the more of a delay there is the less you turn up the stabilizer the less control you'll have of the smoothness of your brush I guess the less smoothness you'll have of your brush I should say next we have here uh, shape okay so this allows you to change the various brushes that you have okay or you can scroll down here you can see that there's a tiny little handlebar here this line um, divides the brush options from the layer options okay so some brushes as you can see here with the default brush here has an option here hardness or softness so you can have a soft edge brush or a hard edge brush okay you can control it like that now with the subscription if you get the pro plan then you get all these other brushes here we go this uh, brush I made okay various brushes there's a pencil one I made if you use it a little thinner okay and now on to the layer options here like I was saying everything under this thin line here indicates that this is um, for the layers and then you could grab this right here to move things up and down and create more space or less space for certain uh, options okay so starting off with the first one here lock transparency that's this little box right here right so say I painted a whole bunch of stuff here and I didn't want to paint outside these very intricate lines and details then I could lock my transparency and the blue that I want to paint in I don't have to worry about painting outside of the lines because I've locked the transparency okay I can only paint over top of what's already been painted um, next we have the opacity of the layer next we have the blend mode of the layer so say I create a new layer okay and I set this layer to normal this is normal and then I could set it to things like multiply right I could set it to screen you know all sorts of different blend modes okay so next we have leave now if you press this button don't worry you're not gonna leave 
the document it just means you're going to leave your current layer you can see these various colors here um, and now this one is gray the, the one that I was current I was on has now turned gray uh, indicating that there's nobody on this layer okay every person will be assigned a different color and the one that's nice and vibrant that's the one that I'm currently on the light orange ones those are the ones that I own but I'm not currently on them and you could also see from here you can see the names of whoever owns that layer only one person can own one layer at a time that way there's no chaos as you can imagine if more than one person can draw on one layer it becomes totally chaotic okay so that was leave and you could double click on the layer to get it back now next we have duplicate if you want to duplicate a layer next we have the new layer button very important right there above the trash can and next after that kind of moving the other direction now from the trash can over to the magnifying glass this is a search layers function this is really great because say I have a layer here that has a tiny little fly tiny little insect in the image and I have a hundred layers and I want to know where is my little fly image then I could just write in fly and you can see that's the only image that shows up I can also search by name right um, if I had a whole bunch of people on here all making different layers I want to find out my layers then I could just type in my username that's why it's always good to create a user uh, name here and you'll be able to save your settings uh, which we'll talk about later um, so it's very very useful to make an account now next we have here the lock button okay the lock button that means that you cannot paint in the layer anymore okay and next to that we have the clipping but button okay so this is another kind of form of um, locking the transparency right you can see that I've locked the transparency I can only paint over top of the yellow orangey color there uh, because I've hit the clipping mask button right and this allows me to again paint very freely without having to worry about painting outside of the lines um, and then you can release it by clicking on the button again okay next button we have here is the clear button so just like that everything's cleared right uh, next to that we have these two buttons one is both are a form of merge okay this one is the regular merge so all of a sudden I'll have one less layer here okay I'm gonna click on that and you can see everything has merged together the orangey stuff with this magenta uh, pink color right I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna click on this merge button okay and what this will do is it'll take the contents of whatever's on my layer and merge it with the layers below I was on the wrong layer so if I'm clicked on layer 5 I click on this button everything in layer 5 will shift to the layer below and I'll be left with an empty layer 5 okay this is because there is a maximum of a hundred layers that you can make for this program um, and you can have up to 30 people all drawing and painting together at the same time so sometimes you can reach that maximum of a hundred layers and if you want to keep painting with all of your friends but you don't want to lose your layer but you want to merge the things on your layer to the layer below then this button comes in handy also footnote you can only merge things to the layer below if you own both of those layers 
So in other words, you cannot merge your stuff onto somebody else's layer because you can, again, you can tell how chaotic that could become. Okay, and the other thing I want to mention here is use Google Chrome, not Firefox, not Safari, and you can try this program out for free at www.magmastudio.io. Okay, the other thing here is for all of the people that love shortcuts, okay? You can go up to Edit, Application Settings, Shortcuts, and create all these various shortcuts. So Edit, Application Settings, you can see these various tabs here, okay? And then you can press Shortcuts, you'll see all these various categories of shortcuts. The one that I like to change is when you press numbers, they used to be a shortcut for tool pre preset 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's these ones over here. I deleted those. I pressed X on all of those and I made my shortcuts 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 0. Uh, set to change my opacity, right? A uh, nice shortcut, very, very useful when you're painting. And the other thing I want to mention here is with the pro plan, you can also talk with your friends. You can start voice calls. Um, you can also, let me hang that up because there's nobody there. If you go to drawing settings, you can create a password, right? You can show cursors of all the users or make them invisible. Okay. And as admin, you're able to kick people off of your board uh, if you need to. And there you go, everybody. So that's Magma Studio, a fantastic drawing app where you can draw for free with up to 30 of your friends or get the pro plan and get these all, all these other features. This is Bobby Chu. Thank you so much for watching.